Hello and welcome to AutoCAD 3D Lectures with your instructor Elliot Gindis. We are in chapter 3 and this is the second and final lesson too. In this lesson we're going to introduce uh, primitives and these are a basic set of tools that you may find useful in certain situations and they include the box, wedge, cone, sphere, cylinder, torus, and the pyramid. And then uh, at the end of the lecture we're going to draw two uh, examples, 3D models. First one will be this uh, fictional rotor, brake rotor, and uh, this will not have primitives, this will be practicing uh, the booleans from the last uh, lesson, namely the uh, subtract. And then uh, to practice your primitives we'll have this drawing right here, just some basic primitive shapes and uh, some of the boolean operations you can do with them. All right, now the environment is really still the same. We still have our uh, 3D modeling ribbon, no new toolbars, and uh, same thing down here, status line and uh, cascading menus. So let me go ahead and erase this and uh, begin with the introduction of the primitives. Okay, so. Uh, think of these primitives as Lego pieces for computer-aided design. All you need to do is specify a few dimensional values and place them in your drawing as needed. And as with most commands, you can uh, input these primitives four different ways. You can uh, type them in. You can uh, use the cascading menus, which will be here on the draw modeling. And there they are. And of course, use the toolbars they are right here and let me just quickly point them out so you can see the shapes there's a box a wedge a cone a sphere a cylinder a torus and the pyramid and finally you can access them in the solid tab of the ribbon three of them are here and the additional ones are under here okay once you select the primitive by one of the methods simply enter the shapes dimensional values as prompted such as height, width, angle, or whatever it is. And, or you can just click or move the mouse for random values. So it's best to have uh, conceptual visual style shading turned on, which we're going to do. And of course, stay in 3D. There we go. And uh, the shapes, of course, become clearer when you do that. And you get the full effect. All right. And finally, uh, hold off trying the other shapes in the modeling toolbar here. We're going to cover them such as spring and uh, uh, a couple of other ones in, uh, in some later lessons. Alright, to try out the first primitive, which is the box, I'm going to go ahead and type the first one. You're going to type in, specify the first corner, specify the second corner, and then just pull your mouse up and it'll be extruded into a box shape. Now keep in mind with the box and as with all of them, you can enter actual specific numerical values. Uh, you don't have to do it by eye, but in this case I'm just going to go extrude them by eye. Alright, if you want to pause for a moment and try that. Meanwhile, I'll go on to the wedge. and I'm actually going to select it from the toolbar this time. And you can specify the first corner, the second corner, and then you're going to pull up the wedge into the wedge shape. Alright, give that a try. The next one is the cone, and here you're going to specify the circle that the base of the cone, and then you're going to click and extrude the cone out. All right, go ahead and try that. And just a reminder again that in all cases you could put in actual values if you know what they need to be. Next we're going to try the sphere, and there it is. Try that out. Then we have the cylinder, which is, starts off with just the base and then gets extruded into a straight cylinder. Then we have the torus. The torus first asks you to uh, specify the overall radius of the torus. Then when you click, the second click is the radius of the tube. And it can be as thin as a 
hula hoop or as thick as a bagel, whichever. We'll pick something in the middle. And there it is. Try that out. And last but not least, we have the pyramid. It starts out like a box. And then when you click, you can extrude it sort of like a cone. And there's all the primitives. And let's just take a look at them using 3D orbit from various different angles. All right, so go ahead and pause the video and try this out on your own. Uh, in the meantime, just a couple of words before we move off this topic. Um, students ask me often in class, how useful are these primitives in real life applications? Well, the best way to describe this is extremely useful in isolated cases and not used so much in well, most others. For example, if you need a shape not quickly done any other way, such as a sphere or a torus, you, know, you can actually extrude the other shapes in many cases, well then primitives are indispensable. But since most of the 3D objects you will design are not simple shapes, primitives are not used all that often. But it is still a very good skill to have and an easy one to learn. Hopefully none of this give you, uh, gave you any problems creating these shapes. So uh, go over each shape several times, add some color, and be sure to practice uh, using you know, 3D orbit to get the various views of the objects. And something else we haven't done here was to switch between shaded and wireframe. This is what they look like in wireframe. Certainly look a lot more realistic with shading on. That's why I suggested that at the beginning. Okay. This chapter concludes flat design. These basic 3D skills go a long way in creating a realistic model of a building or even a simple mechanical device. And in the coming lessons, we're going to add additional tools and some refinement and start with curve design. So be sure to understand everything thus far. And as far as practice goes, I'm going to demonstrate two simple drawings, as I said. Let's take a look at them. First one is a fictional rotor, a brake rotor. And this is really nothing more than just a circle extruded to a certain thickness and then a bunch of drilled holes arrayed and then subtracted. So let's give it a try. I'm going to switch to a uh, head-on view. And you can ignore this for now. That's just another uh, version of this. And what we want to do is create a circle. Of any size that's so, sort of close to what I have here. Then create another circle. At the center of this one. And then create another set of circles. which will represent the drilled holes. And you can just position that by eye. Doesn't really matter. All right, there they are. Then I'm going to go ahead and array the holes. It'll be a polar array with the center based, of course, here. And there we go. Now don't forget to explode these because we are going to need this array to not be an array. Okay, from here on it's very easy. We just go to 3D, zoom in on this, and do a little bit of extruding. And finally, you need to do a little bit of subtracting. As you can see, there's a significant difference here. So let's go to wireframe just for a moment. I'm going to go ahead and subtract. First, the big hole from the little hole. There it is. Check using shading. That's correct. And then finally, subtract. the other little holes. There they are. 
and there's your model. Do a little bit of 3D orbit just to see. Okay, so it's a good exercise in extruding, arraying, and subtracting. So go ahead, pause the video, and try that out. In the meantime, we're going to conclude the lesson with a little bit of work on these primitives. And I'm going to keep this here as a reference. And really simple stuff, we're going to create a pyramid for the first one. And of course you want to be in 3D. And um, I'm going to go ahead and actually switch to model space. We don't want to do this in paper space. And let's go ahead and uh, try this out. We have a pyramid. And at the pyramid, we're going to create a sphere based on this point right here. And then just basically subtract one from the other. There it is. And to make it extra realistic, we just copy the color. Then we can create a, uh, a torus. and create a box make sure they intersect and we'd like to subtract one from the other we can maybe move this guy a little bit more in there we go and subtract one from the other And it looks like we only subtracted a little piece of it, so if that's what happens to you, then simply rotate the UCS icon around the x-axis, and then move the box a little bit down. So very simple error to make, and very simple error to fix. Let's take a look. It should be okay, so let's try it. One and the other. Yep, that looks good. Match properties. All right, the last two, we have a, uh, don't forget first of all to reset your UCS icon. The last two are cylinders and we're gonna union them. different color one like that and one like say blue okay and they are separate right now here's one here's the other we're going to union them into one shape and there it is and the last final thing we're going to make a cone, this time down, and then create a sphere right in the center, about this sized, do a little color manipulation, maybe pick a different set of colors, and then finally do a subtract. There it is. All right, so go ahead and pause and uh, try this out on your own. Just a little bit of very basic practice with primitives and Boolean operations. And uh, we'll uh, continue with the next lesson where we will enter the curve design. So brand